Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is the legendary engineer and producer, David Ferguson. He's going to talk about his friendship with John Prine. Oh yeah, he knew where every good meatloaf was, and what and what day it was, and what, I, you know, I'd call him and say, you want to go to lunch tomorrow? And he goes, yeah, let's go to, uh, let's go to Arnold's, it's Meatloaf Wednesday, you know, or, or you know, I'd call him one day and he'd say, He'd say, yeah, it's meatloaf day at uh, Wendell Smith's, you know. I mean, he knew where every every day of the week where there was meatloaf. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> meatloaf, double order of meatloaf, double order of potatoes and bread and uh, sweet tea. Yeah, he was in heaven. Every time he went to the hospital, when he'd get out of the hospital, I'd make banana pudding for him. And, uh, you know, he'd call him and say, where's my, you know, where's my fucking pudding, man? You know? <laughs> 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 so I'd have to make him, I'd make him up a big batch of banana pudding. He loved it, you know. And you know, he'd sneak it in around Fiona, you know, because you know it's just sugar. You know, it's just terrible for you, you know. And I'd make him meatloaf too. I'd make him meatloaf and mashed potatoes, and you know, he could warm it up. And he loved all that stuff. I, I cooked for him a bunch. I used to play cards at John's. John would uh, wouldn't even start playing cards till midnight or one. And then uh, play cards, you know, Guy Clark would be there and Pat McLaughlin and, and Towns sometimes would be there. I mean, it was dealer's choice always, you know. Dealer's choice got to call the game and there was all kinds of silly games like, you know, high-low Chicago on Tuesday or some shit like that where, you know, it's some rules that were almost impossible to keep up with, you know, deuces wild after you get a two, after you get a three or some crazy thing like that. Or, But there were some great, great card games and uh, really good ones. John would cook, he would uh, cook chicken legs on his grill. And many times, many times we'd be there hanging out, drinking and stuff. And John would start the grill, charcoal grill. And... Before he could, before he put any meat on it, the fire was already out. And forgot to do it, you know. And then he'd start over again. And then I'd, sometimes it'd take him two or three times to get to, get it done. But he had to, he had made the best chicken legs. He cooked chicken legs and he made his own barbecue sauce out of K roll syrup and some other stuff. But it was just great, really good. So who were the good poker players amongst that crowd? Oh, well, John was good. John was good. McLaughlin's always good. Um, the guy, the guy, guy in towns were good at playing cards. All them guys from Texas were good at playing cards. You know, they loved to play cards. But you know, and, and I don't want to mislead anybody. Like there was a card game over there every night or something. But a few, there was a few card games where those guys were all there, and it was it was fun. You know, I first met Prine at uh, at Cowboys when I started to work for Jack Clement in 1980, late 81 or early 82. Um, Prine was a fixture. He was a fixture in there. He um, he'd come through and, and hang out at Cowboys, and you know, he'd drive. He at the time he was, he had a a '58 um, Porsche, black little black Porsche. That thing was incredible. Now it could be worth no telling what. But and uh, he would drive that thing around and he'd come in and. Uh, Hang out, Jackson, play songs and stuff. He was just a great hang. The guy was, he was a friendly guy. You know, I went on boating excursions with John here in Nashville. He he gave me two boats. <laughs> he gave me two boats. He gave me this one boat. It was orange and white, and it was about a seventy-two model Larson or something. About an eighteen-foot boat. It had about like a hundred horse Johnson on it or something or a Chrysler engine. And every time we ever went out on it, it broke down. He just said, you know, you can have it. Just, just take it. And so I took it and used it for a while. And it just kept breaking. I mean, it just wasn't, it wasn't ever was dependable. And so I've, you, I know, you know, the Reno brothers, uh, Don Wayne and Dale and those guys, I gave it to them. I gave it to Dale Reno. <laughs> <laughs> him and Don Wayne. And then uh, years later, John bought a boat from Albanetta. He bought this boat from Albanetta, and it ran great. It just needed, you know, it's like the, it just needed some new upholster work, right? And so 
John went and put it in a, put it in a, uh, at Percy Priest Lake, which is outside of Nashville a little ways, and had it in a slip and took the trailer home with him. Or, or we took the trailer back to his place so he'd be able just to go in and put the key in it and go. So we put it in there so the in the spring, it was a beautiful day. I remember it was a beautiful day. He said, uh, oh, he wanted, he said, he said, I want to go get that boat out of the water and take it and get it reupholstered. And I said, okay, so so we hook it up to his pickup truck, hook the trailer up. We go out, we go out there, and me and John go get in the boat. Or John gets in the boat. I'm I'm parking the I'm backing the trailer down. And John gets in the boat, and I see him, he starts it. And I see him looking around down the bottom of the boat like this as he's driving. <laughs> and by the time he got over there to us, he was knee deep in water. It had the freeze plug had come out, and it, the faster he ran, the more water was coming in the boat. Luckily, there were some John Prime fans right there at the at the uh, at the ramp and helped us wrestle this thing <laughs> in. And then we tied it on, tied it on the trailer, get up the road, and the trailer has had a flat. And so, and the rim was bent. So I called my sister, bring a hammer around to fix the rim on the boat. Anyway, so he takes it home, has a guy come over and take the interior out of the boat to redo it. Guy disappears into thin air, took $500 of John's money and the interior of the boat and disappears into thin air. And John says, you can have the boat. <laughs> he said, I can he said, enough, <laughs> uncle, <laughs> you know, and uh, so Mike Bubb wound up with that boat, and uh, let's see, that was, that's, I went through some boating things with Prine, you know, and, and the last, um, the last boat he owned, he went and bought a brand new boat that was, looked like a brand new red Cadillac, it was a beautiful boat, and, and uh, we went up the river in it, and uh, that was the last Last boat ride I ever went on with John. It was about, I don't know, a year or so before he passed away, I think. About three about three years ago. What, what would he like fishing for? Like, was he a fly fisherman? And no, no, he was, um, he, he liked catching trout, you know. I, I think that's what they fished for, yeah. mainly down there in, on the White River, you know. But I think he liked the camaraderie more than anything. I mean, you know, he'd go down to one of those, and they'd play cards, you know, down at there. I'd play music and play cards and stuff on those fishing trips and drink a bunch. He always tried to get me to get him a port of moonshine to take down there with him, you know, and I would. <laughs> I'd find him a court. And, uh, and Roger Cook, you know you know who Roger is. He, Roger always go on those, those things, and Jim Rooney, Roger, Jim Rooney, and, and – um, John Camp would go on some of them, uh, and Joe Allen, um, John Earl, uh, and I don't even know what John Earl's name is. Maybe John Earl. It may be his, both of his names. John, you know, I don't know his last name. Maybe Earl, or maybe his middle name. I don't know. But John always wanted him to go because he fried the chicken, and <laughs> that was very important to John to have the good fried chicken down there. So he had no ego. I mean, that I ever saw. I mean, he, he never he never flashed his ego at anybody I ever saw or at me, you know, or, you know, it was never one of those things like, damn it, I'm John Prine, I want this to happen. You know, it was never that. I never never got that out of him and never, you know, he was always friendly to people, his fans, you know. He, he was a friendly, nice man, and he was funny. He was a really funny guy with a different slant on things, you know. He was a he was a humble guy. I just I leave you with that. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, subscribe to my channel and tell me down below what your favorite John Prine song is, and I'll see you somewhere down the road. Much love to you.